How does a dedicated macro lens compare to a non-macro lens with an extension tube? Now macro lenses aren't exactly the cheapest of lenses, so if you are considering macro photography, you would have to dish out quite a fair amount of money on a good macro lens. But however, if you are on a budget, you might have heard of these. These are extension tubes. Extension tubes are very, very cheap, and if you've never heard of these, you would really want to check them out because they are really good and really, really cheap, and they get the job done. So using an extension tube with a non-macro lens, it increases the distance between the lens and the camera, basically the lens and the sensor. So by increasing the distance between the lens and the sensor, it reduces the minimum focusing distance of that lens, giving you a larger magnification because you can get closer up to your subject. So what we're going to do today is we are going to be comparing one of Canon's best macro lenses. This is the Canon EF 100mm f2.8 L. IS, we'll be comparing this to a Canon 50mm 1.4 with an extension tube. Now the thing about extension tubes is you can basically use them with any lens and you'll get different results using them with different lenses. With some lenses you'll get a much higher magnification, with some you might get a much much lower magnification. It just depends on the specifications of the lens because every lens is designed differently, so all the physics are different and then you get different results. So for the purpose of this today we'll be using the ultimate standard lens, the 50mm. So before we jump right into the image samples, a few considerations about macro extension tubes. When you're using these dumb extension tubes, that means they don't have the digital contacts, so your lens cannot actually communicate with the camera body, you will lose the autofocus, your lens will not be able to autofocus because it's detached from your body, and your lens will also lose image stabilization if it has any, and most important of all, you will lose the electronic aperture control over your lens. Now if you're using a manual focus lens with the uh, iris control directly on the lens itself, this shouldn't be a concern for you, but however if you're using digital lenses whereby the only means of controlling your aperture value is through the camera body, then this will be a huge issue for you because when you're doing macro photography, aperture control is absolutely crucial because it controls the depth of field of your image. Now luckily if you're using a Canon EF lens, there is actually a little hack, a little workaround to getting the correct aperture that you want. So all you have to do is actually, it's very simple, all you have to do is connect the lens to your camera. And then all you have to do is dial in the correct aperture settings on your camera. Once you've dialed in the correct settings, just press the depth of field preview or make sure you are on manual mode so you can dial in the correct aperture settings. Press the depth of field preview button and while keeping the depth of field preview button held down, detach your lens with one hand. So once you've done that, you should see that your lens should stay at the aperture value that you just dialed in. The aperture blades will be staying in place and they will not open up until you connect them back to your body. So they've opened back up once I connected them back into the camera body. All right, so without further ado, let's run the tests. So we'll begin with the macro lens. So for the scene, we have a bit of gravel with a little green plant in the middle. So that's what we'll be photographing. And then for the lights, I have a flash setup, which is bounced which is bouncing off this back wall here. So we have a nice big diffused light source coming from behind. The flash is remotely triggered. I'm going to set it to F8. So I'll be photographing the center of the green plant at minimum focusing distance. So that's maximum magnification. And I'm photographing it on a 5D Mark III. Now as we can see, the macro lens performs very very well. It's very sharp in the middle, it's very nice sharpness and very nice contrast. Even down to the edges, it's still very very sharp. So now let's go over to the 50mm. So first of all, we will be photographing the scene at the native minimum focusing distance of the 50mm 1.4 without an extension tube. So let's see what that looks like. It's pretty far. And there we can see it's not too much of any magnification at all. The subject looks tiny. So now let's put on an extension tube. 
So now let's perform that trick we talked about earlier. I'm going to set it to F8 as well for consistency. And then we will connect it to the extension tube, which goes on the camera body. All right, so now I'll be focusing this as well at minimum focusing distance. Now, because it's stopped down to F8, the viewfinder is just horribly dark. So I'm going to be using live view to compose the image. Now, right off the bat, you can see I have to get much, much closer to my subject to get it to focus at the minimum focusing distance. It's much, much closer than the macro lens. There's a much shorter working distance and focusing is definitely much harder. It's about uh, a centimeter and a half away from the tip of the lens. The working distance is definitely more uncomfortable compared to the 100mm macro. Now if we punch into the center, you can see it's actually very, very sharp as well. However, there's a huge flaring issue on this one. The contrast is definitely lacking. However, the sharpness is still very, very nice in the center. But however, if you notice in the corners, there is a huge degradation in image quality. It starts to get all smudgy and soft and everything seems stretched out. But considering this lens is not a macro lens, this is actually no surprise because using an extension tube, we are raising the magnification of the lens by so much, this lens is simply not designed to resolve such fine detail at this magnification. So we are actually pushing the resolution of the lens beyond what it was designed for. But given the fact it still performs very, very nice in the middle. But comparing this to the 100mm macro, you can see that this actually has a significantly higher magnification compared to the macro lens. Now the macro lens is a life size one to one ratio magnification spec lens. So that means this is probably 1.25 magnification or something just higher than one to one magnification ratio. So with all that being said, the image quality, the sharpness of it is actually very, very respectable. Now, if you're using this on a crop sensor body, the edge softness shouldn't be too much of an issue because it crops out the extreme edges and you're left with the nice sharp center of the image. So an extension tube is definitely a very viable budget option for macro photography. In fact, it steps up really, really well to a dedicated macro lens. Now, in fact, the sharpness in the center of this non-macro designed setup, I'd say it's only slightly softer when compared in the center to the dedicated 100mm f2.8 L macro lens. So it's definitely a viable option if you're considering macro on a budget. Do go ahead and get yourself an extension tube. Now, if you're interested to see what it would be like if I put two extension tubes on this macro lens. I have already done that in an earlier video. Just click on the screen here to go to that video. I'll also post a link to that video down in the description below. So that is pretty much it for today. If any questions, any comments, any suggestions, just post them down in the comment section below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.